Thank you and welcome to the show today. The topic today is some of the ways of love. And we're fortunate to have with us a psychiatrist, uh, Dr. Cupid Poe, to talk about uh, some of the ways of love and other uh, elements of love. And uh, Dr. Poe will give us some information in reference to uh, his uh, qualifications in a real sense for talking about such a subject. And I think that uh, uh, very few of our audience will need any kind of introduction to uh, Dr. Poe because he's been with us on many occasions and has given us excellent information. And of course, Dr. Poe, let me welcome you to the show this morning. And to have you to uh, make some statements in reference to uh, how you got here as a scholar, as a psychiatrist. And then we'll get into uh, what I consider to be a very, very intriguing topic myself, some of the ways of love. And of course, you'll tell us some of the ways of love uh, as the uh, program develops. But first, give us some information about your background, your education, and some of the things that brought you to us this morning. I came uh, to Tennessee State, Dr. Hain, in 1956. Uh, uh, to major in, in biology and I graduated in 60, went to Meharry Medical College and finished there in 1964. Uh, did my internship in Chicago and was in the military for two years. I came back to Nashville in 1976, uh, entered, uh, worked in Meharry for a while and then subsequently I've worked in various settings, state hospitals, uh, worked in prisons and jails, and now I have a part-time private practice in Dixon, Tennessee. I pastored two churches at different times here in Nashville, mm -hmm. Tennessee, and have uh, authored uh, two books, uh, one mm -hmm. called The Prayer Response, mm -hmm. a series of essays on different subjects, such as what is the mind, where is the mind, the mm -hmm. relationship between the mind and the brain. Mm -hmm. The other is uh, Imogene Reborn, which mm -hmm. is a fiction book, which uh, was inspired by my practice, and it's a story of how faith in God and forgiveness can transform the damage uh, mm -hmm. and the trauma of being abused. Mm -hmm. Very good. And so, so you're well fortified in reference to the information that you have dealing with love, I would imagine. Well, uh, I hope uh, I have uh, some understanding. Some understanding of uh, uh, and, and, and uh, the focus <coughs> I want to, uh, uh, well, what I'd like to focus on today is the wisdom of uh, adversity, mm -hmm. the wisdom uh, behind why God allows us to go through uh, difficulties, uh, conflict, uh, disappointment, mm -hmm. uh, loss, uh, addictions, mm -hmm. uh, why he allows us to go through divorce, uh, mm -hmm. why he allows us to have financial problems, mm -hmm. uh, mental illness, physical illness. Uh, uh, Dr. Warren in his book, The Purpose Driven Life says that there's a purpose behind every problem. Mm -hmm. uh, I like to think of uh, life problems as life challenges. Very good. And mm -hmm. so uh, I think it's important that we draw from the Word of God in our effort to understand and have the proper perspective mm -hmm. on pain or adversity. Mm -hmm. uh, Romans 8, 28 and 29 says essentially God works, makes all things work together mm -hmm for the good of those who love, love him, him. and good. who are called according to his purpose. Uh, the Lord of God gives us uh, some other glimpses of why God allows mm -hmm. and how he uses pain or adversity in our lives. Mm -hmm. You recall uh, the story of Joseph, mm -hmm. sold into slavery by his brothers, uh, uh, was falsely accused of uh, trying to rape Potiphar's wife, mm -hmm. was thrown into prison. Uh, he was forgotten for two or three years by a, a person that he helped. Uh, and yet God raised him uh, yep. to a position mm -hmm. of authority in, mm -hmm. all, in all of Egypt, which en enabled him to use his wisdom uh, to, to, uh, to save the Egyptian people and his own family. Uh, God allowed that. And so in real sense, what, you, what, you, what you're saying is that through suffering, some kind of uh, suffering, that uh, there's some kind of redemption that, 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 that is always possible to come out of uh, that suffering. Is that, what, is that what we're saying here? That's exactly what I'm saying. As a matter of fact, uh, Dr. Warren makes the point that uh, God teaches us. We learn some things through suffering mm -hmm. that we can't learn any other way. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, the author uh, her name is Joni er Erickson Joni Erickson Tata mm -hmm. uh, who uh, sustained a, a severe injury to her neck which left her paralyzed uh, from the neck down uh, mm -hmm. says that uh, when life is rosy uh, we can talk about the Lord uh, we can mm -hmm. imitate him 
okay? But only in suffering do we really know him. Good. Mm -hmm. So there's some things that, that God teaches us through suffering, through pain, mm -hmm. through problems, that he doesn't teach us in any other way. And, and, and I would imagine over the last uh, few uh, seconds we have before our first commercial break, I imagine that this would resonate with a large number of folks today in this economy that, we're ha that we have that are really having difficult times and wondering why me? Yes. In, in a real sense. And so I think, and, and I can appreciate that. And of course, we'll be back with you uh, following this very, very short uh, commercial break. Thank you and welcome back to the second segment of the show for today. We're talking to Dr. Cupid Poe and the uh, topic is some of the ways of love. And Dr. Poe has already laid the foundation for uh, such a topic by uh, talking about how people are able to overcome and uh, the information that they often learn only through suffering. Of course, Dr. Poe, let's uh, continue our conversation by giving you the uh, next eight minutes uh, to sort of develop some other ways of love that, that, that you're talking about. Yes, uh, our, our purpose in, in uh, uh, saying that there's a wisdom in adversity mm -hmm. uh, uh, is essential to say that God reaches out to us in different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, he often reaches out to us by allowing us to fall, mm -hmm. by allowing us to hurt, by allowing us to go through some changes in our lives that we, won't, we don't want to go through. Mm -hmm. But he uses uh, the pain and adversity in our lives in order to strengthen, in order to get our attention good. often. Okay, very good. In order to, uh, <laughs> to uh, help us to come to the understanding mm -hmm. that we can't make it without him, mm -hmm. that we indeed need him, that we need to, to turn to him, mm -hmm. and we need to commit our lives to him. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, the purpose, I'm convinced, uh, behind God creating us is that we might choose to please him. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that it it's is a his choice. goal. It's, it's, it's a yes. choice that you're saying. Yes, that, he, that we, God wants us to choose mm -hmm. to please him. To please him is to serve him. Mm -hmm. To serve him is to love him. Mm -hmm. And so when we're loving God, mm -hmm. we are loving all people. Mm -hmm. I think it is Rick Warren makes the point in his book uh, in the chapel called, in the chapter referred to as uh, what matters the most. Mm -hmm. He says that the, the lesson that God wants us most to learn mm -hmm is how to love him mm -hmm. and how to love people, mm -hmm. all right? Yeah. And so um, once we're on the track of, uh, of trying to love God, trying mm -hmm. to love other people mm -hmm. by pleasing God, then we're on the God-ordained track for our life. Mm -hmm. We're in his purpose. And, uh, and, and so he allows and uses pain and mm -hmm. problems and whatever we go through, That's the he wisdom allows of, it. Wisdom That's the pain. wisdom of pain, the mm -hmm. wisdom of adversity. Very good. Dr. Mm -hmm. Charles Stanley of In Touch Ministries in, mm -hmm. out of Atlanta, Georgia, uh, has written a book called How to Handle Adversity. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the ways we best handle it is by trying to, to live a life pleasing to God. Mm -hmm. And the wisdom of God will instruct us and inform us mm -hmm. and enable us to accept the pain in our life mm -hmm. and also to, to see how it, God is using it and making it work together mm -hmm. for good, mm -hmm. for our good mm -hmm. and for the good of those uh, who love him as well. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so in a real sense, uh, 
uh, and, and would you and you would say that there is some kind of spiritual connection that uh, guides us once we tune in with with God that there is really we can only have access to the spirit and recognize that we have access to the spirit by believing and doing the will of God is that what we're saying yes well I think that uh, once we choose God once we turn to him I think he becomes more active in our lives but mm -hmm. I think he is there from the beginning mm -hmm. I think he is there from the beginning uh, guiding and leading as far mm -hmm. as we will allow him mm -hmm. to but once we turn to him, once he achieves the goal of getting us to turn to mm -hmm. him, which often involves allowing us to make bad decisions, okay. allowing us to experience some of the consequences mm -hmm. of our bad decisions. Mm -hmm. And I think there are times when God decides to bring pain in our lives mm -hmm. as a part of his effort to, to get us to choose him. Mm -hmm. Because his goal is to help us to become more like his son, mm -hmm. Jesus. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and to become more like Jesus is to, is to grow in kindness, is to grow in patience, is to grow in forgiveness, mm -hmm. is to go in, grow in being unselfish, is yeah. to grow mm -hmm. in being compassionate and kind mm -hmm. and, and, and caring and giving, of, uh, giving mm -hmm. to other people. Mm -hmm. So this is God's goal. Mm -hmm. He wants us to become more like his son. And he knows that in order to achieve that goal, he's got to allow us to go through some things, mm -hmm. to hurt uh, to be disappointed, mm -hmm. uh, to be frustrated, mm -hmm. uh, uh, to, to have some losses in life related to physical death. Mm -hmm. so, so God allows and uses our pain and the, the our frustration, mm -hmm. the adversity in our lives, and he makes it all work together for our good to help us to grow spiritually. You know, Dr. Poe, uh, all of that uh, brings me to uh, uh, think about the uh, spiritual Lord, I want to be a Christian yes. in my heart. I yes. mean, I think that in a real sense, what you're saying here is, is that there is a yearning yes. <laughs> that we have, and especially after we undergo some kind of pain or some kind of suffering, yes. that idea of uh, perhaps if we could become a Christian yes. and something that we really desire to do, uh, that, that's my interpretation of, of, of what you're saying, you know, how, how it would have an impact upon me. Yes, I, I think that God, having put a part of his spirit in each of us, mm -hmm. uh, that spirit uh, reaches out in us or inspires us mm -hmm. to reach out to God, to turn to God, to live for him, to please him. And until we, we turn to God, I think it was um, uh, one great saint who says, our soul is restless mm -hmm. until it finds rest in God. God. Mm -hmm. So there's an emptiness uh, in us until we find God, until we begin mm -hmm. to try to live our lives pleasing to him. Mm -hmm. There's an emptiness there mm -hmm. that nothing else can, can fill. Mm -hmm. And by the way, speak, let's go back to pain because I think that mm -hmm. the pain that we, we, we struggle to overcome, mm -hmm. the pain that we struggle to escape often, mm -hmm. the pain that we struggle to neutralize through drugs and sex mm -hmm. and, and uh, uh, alcohol mm -hmm. and food, mm -hmm. okay? okay? The pain mm -hmm. that we struggle to escape from mm -hmm. Uh, is a pain that God allows so that he can use it. Mm -hmm. So can, he can use it to bless us, to draw us closer to mm -hmm. him, and to get us to commit our lives to mm -hmm. him. So the pain that God allows, mm -hmm. it cannot be uh, coped with effectively. It cannot be escaped entirely. Okay. It cannot mm -hmm. be overcome. Drugs, no matter. alcohol. Drugs, alcohol, wealth, 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 fame. Okay, very good. Okay? okay. That pain will not go away uh -huh. until we turn to God. And he's the only one who can empower us to accept it mm -hmm. and, to, uh, and, to, and to prosper uh, mm -hmm. based on how we cope for it in his way. Mm -hmm. The way I cope for the pain in my life uh, Dr. Haney mm -hmm. is by trying to live my life pleasing to pleasing God. Pleasing to God. That's uh -huh. the way I That's cope with okay. the pain. And, and, and w w which is something that uh, covers all bases. If, yes. if, if, if that is a central idea and a central thing that you're trying to do, no matter whatever happens, and as long as you're committed to that, yeah. then you're all right. Is, Absolutely. Is, is that, yeah, well, that's, Absolutely. that's I, I, I kind of Absolutely. feel that way too. Now, that, trying to live one's life pleasing to God mm -hmm. does not eliminate pain, mm -hmm. but the Holy Spirit gets involved in our mm -hmm. daily experience, enabling us to accept it and to and to be blessed by right. it mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. otherwise we see pain as an as the enemy good okay. and we and we spend our time uh trying to uh overcome it trying to escape from it very good of course let us take this uh second good. commercial break and we'll be back with our audience following this very very short uh, commercial break
Thank you and welcome back to the final segment of the show for today. We're talking to Dr. Cupid Poe and he's talking about some of the ways of love and the benefit in a real sense of pain in our lives, uh, primarily because it forces us to uh, turn to God. Amen. And of course, Dr. Poe, let's uh, not only talk about uh, some of the ways of love, but let's talk about uh, some of your uh, writings, because mm -hmm. I understand uh, that uh, you've got uh, one Imogene Reborn mm -hmm. that uh, has the possibilities of perhaps one day making the big screen, which is yes. to say that people might, there, there might be a movie that might come. Let's talk about that from that perspective. Uh, Dr. Haney, uh, we wrote this book uh, in collaboration with uh, Kathy Macias, mm -hmm. who is a, an award-winning author mm -hmm. in California. Uh, back, we started in 2004. Mm -hmm. The book was published in uh, 2005. Mm -hmm. In 2006, uh, was accepted in competition for a Pulitzer Prize. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a fiction book, and uh, basically the theme is is the fact that uh, faith in God, mm -hmm. uh, forgiveness, and trying to live one's life pleasing to God, that is, trying to live an obedient life mm -hmm. uh, before God, uh, can overcome the damage mm -hmm. of being uh, of being abused. In her mm -hmm. case, she was sexually abused mm -hmm. by her racist and alcoholic father. She was mentally and physically abused by her mother. Mm -hmm. uh, she was abused through two marriages. Mm -hmm. And eventually then, she comes back home mm -hmm. and uh, connects with an Afro-American pastor. She's Caucasian. Mm -hmm. And he leads her to forgive mm -hmm. uh, those persons who've abused her. Mm -hmm. And so she decides to turn to God and she begins to attend uh, mm -hmm. this particular church that happens to be an Afro-American church. Mm -hmm. So uh, this, is, this book is an example mm -hmm. of how God allowed her mm -hmm. to be abused early on, okay. sexually abused mm -hmm. by her own biological father mm -hmm. now, uh, between ages 10 and 15, mm -hmm. sexually abused, uh, mentally and physically abused by her mother, mm -hmm. uh, uh, physically and emotionally abused by the first husband, mm -hmm. Uh, sexual abuse by the second husband. Mm -hmm. God allowed all of that, mm -hmm. uh, but then he came right back mm -hmm. and, and used what she had been through, the trauma, the abuse, what she had been through mm -hmm. uh, to teach, uh, to, to guide her to him mm -hmm. and, to, uh, and to guide her to forgive and mm -hmm. to live a mm -hmm. transformed life. Mm -hmm. and, so, um, another ex uh, and so that's the story of Imogene. We feel mm -hmm. that it's a powerful message. Okay. Uh, the book has... Um, as I said, it was accepted in competition for a Pulitzer Prize. Mm -hmm. uh, it's available on Amazon at, on, online, mm -hmm. Amazon.com. It's good. also available here in Nashville at mm -hmm. Cokesbury Bookstore, mm -hmm. and it can be ordered through any bookstore. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a powerful book, and most people who read the book said, I couldn't put it put down. It down. Now, mm -hmm. the other book that we've mm -hmm. written is called The Prayer Response. I'm the sole author of this particular book. Mm -hmm. It's a series of essays on different subjects, and related to pain, I think without being prayerful, mm -hmm. it's impossible, I believe, mm -hmm. to, to accept pain, the reality of pain in one's mm -hmm. life. I think it's impossible to, to really gain uh, God's perspective mm -hmm. on how uh, he would like us to view the pain in our mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think that uh, this book then uh, speaks to uh, just how essential and how necessary prayer mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. if we are to acquire uh, a Christ-centered uh, view mm -hmm. of the pain and the adversity that he mm -hmm. allows in our lives. In reality, you can't uh, really have a Christ-centered view without prayer. Would that, would that be a correct I think, statement? I think that's... That, that seems to be a, sort of the ingredient that you have to have. That's like making a cake without uh, sugar or whatever. Yes. <laughs> Some, something's missing if you don't have that uh, prayer in your life. Uh, it's, 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 would that be correct? I think that's quite accurate. Uh, because prayer is communicating with God. Mm -hmm. Prayer then is calling on God. Mm -hmm. Prayer is listening to God. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that the most important aspect of communication is mm -hmm. listening. Mm -hmm. And so in my prayer life, I probably do more listening than talking mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I know that God always, he already knows mm -hmm. what I've, what I've, uh, what I'm going through mm -hmm. and what I've been through. That he's always there anyway. He's always say. there. <laughs> so, and, the, and if there's no uh, recognition of that, it's not because of God, but because of us. Is, yes. Is, is, was that be correct? Yes, mm -hmm. very much. Let me also make a comment about uh, where people are at. Many people are unemployed today. Mm -hmm. Many people are earning less than they, they earned before. Mm -hmm. uh, we have families who have uh, 
uh, who are struggling with teenagers who are rebellious, who are defiant, okay. uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, the problem of gang activity, a uh, high rate of homicide, as you know, uh, in the Afro-American community, a mm -hmm. uh, high rate of suicide in the Caucasian community, um, uh, divorce, separation, mm -hmm. mental abuse, wife abuse, uh, uh, spouse abuse. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've got a lot of problems. Yeah, a lot of problems. A lot of problems, mm -hmm. okay? And so people are going through it. And I think that people need to know mm -hmm. that there's purpose behind whatever they're going through. Mm -hmm. That God is not silent. He is not blind. Mm -hmm. He is aware of what's going on. And he is determined to use whatever pain or problems that we're going through. And he's going to eventually make it work together for our good. Mm -hmm. Now, he is more able to do that if we turn to him. Mm -hmm. uh, he doesn't want to have to see us blind or crippled uh, or in jail or prison mm -hmm. before we, we get the message mm -hmm. that he's reaching out to us. Mm -hmm. He's allowing us to hurt so that, as you said, mm -hmm. so that we will turn to him. Mm -hmm. And if we turn to him in our pain, uh, then he will heal, he will deliver, heal, and transform us mm -hmm. and give us the new life that he created us for. You know, so many people miss all of this, Dr. <coughs> Pope, mm -hmm. primarily because they don't uh, have an understanding of God, nor do they believe in God. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you say to, to those individuals this morning? Well, I would say that uh, God is the only answer to uh, the pain in our life. Mm -hmm. He's the only answer to the emptiness in our life. He's the only answer to our unhappiness. Mm -hmm. He's the only answer to our frustration. Mm -hmm. I would encourage those persons who, who don't believe in God, mm -hmm. give them a try. Mm -hmm. uh, God has never failed All right. uh, mm -hmm. a person who turns to him sincerely. Uh, God has never failed a person to deliver and to heal and to transform and to give a new life mm -hmm. to the person who genuinely seeks him. Mm -hmm. And we seek him by turning to him, acknowledging, acknowledging that we've made some bad decisions, mm -hmm. we've made some mistakes, asking him to forgive us and asking him to guide us and lead us and, to, and asking him and asking the Lord Jesus Christ to come into mm -hmm. our lives and to be our savior. Uh, and the second step would then be finding a church, attend, join, mm -hmm. become baptized, and then try as best you can following the word of God and the example of other committed believers to live one's life pleasing mm -hmm. to God. Mm -hmm. I really think that it is it, the best decision that we can make, that a person can mm -hmm. make in this life, is a decision to make pleasing God your only goal. Mm -hmm. Not mm -hmm. your number one goal, but your only, only goal, goal in only life. I think that's important to you in life. Right, because mm -hmm. that's all encompassing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I'm trying to please God, then I'm gonna try to watch my diet. If I'm all trying right. to please God, mm -hmm. I'm gonna be forgiving. If I'm mm -hmm. trying to please God, I'm gonna try to be unselfish. Mm -hmm. If I'm trying to please God, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be helpful of other people as, mm -hmm. as much as I can. The common denominator is what? Trying to please God. Trying and to please God. Everything else works out. Uh, everything it, else mm -hmm. works out. Mm -hmm. I can. I can cope with the pain in my life. Mm -hmm. I see the wisdom of the pain in my life. I can cope with frustration. I'm no longer terrified of death, mm -hmm. physical death, because mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit will let me know that I've got a home beyond mm -hmm. physical death, beyond this life. Uh, there is eternal life mm -hmm. waiting for mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. So the, the God's purpose for us is that we would be transformed and slowly move to the point where we see that the only purpose and goal worth mm -hmm. pursuing in life is the goal of pleasing God. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, that, and that covers everything. That covers That it. covers everything. And of course, Dr. Poe, I think we have about uh, half, a, about a minute before okay. we, <coughs> excuse me, end this show for today. But let me uh, thank you again for bringing by that excellent information and uh, the whole idea of being able to understand mm -hmm. that there is a God somewhere. And that, uh, and I think that you've made us aware of that not only during this show, but time and time again. And so you've really made a, a, a wonderful contribution, not only here, but everywhere else, uh, in prisons and all the places that you've gone, always delivering essentially the same message, that yes. God is good and that God is calling upon us to turn to him and that once we turn to him and ask for forgiveness, that he is a God that forgives. And I yeah. just want to let you know that I appreciate that information because mm -hmm. not only does it go out to our audience, <coughs> but it comes across to me. Praise and God. when it comes across to me, I'm able to put it into my life and hopefully they'll do the same thing. And of course, let me encourage our audience to tune in again next week for another informative edition of Comments. Thank you and good morning.